Hello, my name is Manuel Heredia and this is Mini Puppet Adventures. Welcome to part 5 of the series. Today we're going to download, install and set up all the software of our robot. I'm really excited about this. Let's go do it. Let's go to the documentation page of Mini Pupper. I've left a link below in the description of the video, or you can Google Mangdang Mini Pupper with the docs and you will find it. Then we need to go to the assembly chapter and to step 1.2, download the image. So here you will find a link to the Mini Pupper docs repository. Click on the link. And this will take you to a Google Drive repo where you can find a number of useful files. There are different images depending on the version of your circuit board and the application. Here we are looking for the basic image for our V2 circuit board, the latest image available at the day I recorded this tutorial was from 19th February 2022. So we uh, double click on it then click on download, then yes, download anyway, and this will start the download of the file. This is a four gigabyte zip file, and for me it took about 20 minutes. But of course, this will depend on the quality of your connection, so you may need to be a little bit patient. Right, so next we need to burn the image we just downloaded onto the micro SD card. We're trying to create a bootable drive, so it's not enough to just copy and paste the files. You actually need dedicated software. I personally like Balena Etcher. It is free, multi-platform, and really easy. There's a link below if you want to try it. I already have it installed in my laptop, so I just open the app, click on Flash from File, Navigate to the folder where you stored your downloaded file and click on it. You don't even need to unzip it. Next, we will need to connect the microSD card to the computer. Here I will be using a USB adapter. So here it is and I need to insert the microSD card on, on this slot, like so, okay, so, and then the adapter into the USB port of the laptop. Wait for the drive to show up, here we go, yes, okay, click select target, pick the drive, Click select, click flash, enter the sudo password to authenticate, and away we go. The uncompressed image is 15 gigabytes, so flashing it onto the SD card is a lengthy process. In my case, a bit over an hour. So you may want to find something else to do in the meantime. I suggest, for example, checking out part 6 of the series. Okay, so we fast forward to the end of the flashing process and we can see that now Balina starts a validation. Fair enough. This success. So now we can remove the USB adapter, extract the micro SD card, and plug it in the dedicated slot of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now our robot is ready to power up. We will first connect an external screen to the HDMI port number two and USB keyboard and USB mouse to power up the robot. We press for three seconds the button underneath the battery and we wait for the robot to boot up.
we have basically two things to do. Configure the Wi-Fi and launch the calibration tool to reset the servos of our robot. Regarding the Wi-Fi, uh, as you can see, the Raspberry Pi ships with the Wi-Fi adapter disabled by default. So what we need to do is open the terminal and edit this configuration file shown in the screen. We just need to comment out this line, which is the one that disables the Wi-Fi. To save, Control X, yes, and enter. And we actually need to reboot the Raspberry for the changes to take effect. So let's do that. After reboot, we can see that now the Wi-Fi adapter is working. So we can configure our Wi-Fi network. This will be convenient later uh, so that we will be able to remotely connect to our robot. We enter the router password. Oh, and we wait for the signal to come up. Okay, here we are. Next, open a terminal, type IPA, and write down the IP address assigned to our robot, which is the one I'm highlighting here. I mean, it will be different in your case. We will need it later to connect remotely to the robot, for example, through SSH or VNC. Next, we launch the calibration tool. This will automatically reset all the servos to the neutral position. Now, doing this before we install the legs is highly recommended because we can't know for sure where is the neutral position of the servos. If the legs are installed far off from the zero, there could be a large correction here during this first reset and we risk locking the mechanism, stalling the servos or even breaking some parts. Resetting the servos beforehand ensures that when we assemble the legs, we will do it quite close to the neutral position. The calibration tool itself is very simple. We just uh, use the sliders to move uh, the, uh, the servos. You can take this opportunity to fine tune the hips, but this is entirely optional because we will do a full calibration after the legs are installed. Click update if you want to save the changes. With this, we have completed the installation and setup of the software, and we can just power off our mini popper to continue with the assembly of the legs. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.